it was a really good intro. Oh, the phone wanna... fell about. Wait, wait, really wait do that intro really again. Really I, I couldn't hear you. You cut off. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Showtime Nerds. <laughs> and with that, everybody, welcome to the podcast. How you guys doing today? Of course, is the lovely, you the one and only. <laughs> wow. What, man? That was, a, that was a joke one. I didn't. Wow. Okay. <laughs> guys, I am the lovely, the one, the only Curly Bardock. I am here with Grimo. Grimo, say hi. Yeah. We don't say hi around these parts. Understandable. Right. And then we got. All right. Yes, or aka the man himself, the living legend, Ralph. Yes. <laughs> and then we have the Nova Nuclear. How you doing, my man? <laughs> What's up? I'm doing all good. You? Ah, uh, chilling, bro. All right, guys. So <laughs> we're gonna talk about probably the biggest thing that came out of last week, and that is the changes that is going on in the DC Extended yeah. Universe. Um. So. For the listeners that may not know, there was a rumor that pretty much is very, very obvious to happen that the Flash movie is going to basically be the flashpoint of the DC Extended Universe, retconning and deleting everything Zack Snyder has done up to this point. Yes. That means only Wonder Woman and Aquaman will be only included in the DCEU. That counts. And I'm not going to lie, I don't think Aquaman is going to do that good, especially with the Amber Heard allegations. No, I think Shazam's still in it, right? And so is... Uh, oh, yeah, I, Adam. I completely yeah. forgot about those like, movies. Perfect, you yeah. mentioned. You know what's crazy? Before we get into the topic, which you just reminded me, I, isn't um, the Shazam and Black Adam movie supposed to happen after Black Adam? I, well, yes. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Because, they're not, Black Adam um, comes like, first before the Shazam. Like, they're not, like, from the everything, like, first. From everything I've heard, like, they're not even putting Shazam and Black Adam at, in the same place during the movie. Yeah, they're not They're because, not in the same movie. They don't take place in the same movie. Yeah, yeah Black like, Adam's an origin story. No, this, yeah. so Shazam takes place, not Shazam, Black Adam takes place, I think, in the 70s, right? Am I wrong? This takes place. I, I way, think no, like, okay, this takes place years eight, and years eight, before eight, Shazam eight, does. Eight times. Yeah. So the release dates are as follows: Black Adam comes first. It comes out in July 29th. Uh, the Flash movie comes out November 4th this year, and uh, Shazam 2 comes out next June. Aquaman also comes out this December. So, um, what they want to do is basically control what characters are going to be in this new, um, extended universe. And I'm like I said before, I'm pretty sure they're taking out Affleck and Henry Cavill. Affleck. Affleck. The basis of <laughs> Zack Snyder was gone. Yeah. So everything that Zack Snyder really tried to push for in this universe is gone, and it's unfortunate. Like I get what's going on with um uh with uh Affleck's not Affleck. What was his last name? <laughs> <laughs> but Affleck. no no keep it like that it's kind of funny keep it like Affleck. that so, and by the way i don't know if you noticed but i kind of got the snack snyder into your vocabulary too the snacks <laughs> the snack uh before before recording the podcast we were talking about and really appreciating um S- snack snyder and uh henry cavill for the for the they just absolute the units that they are men. the fucking beauty of male standards that is that is no Grim's home. words, not You're mine. You're still Ryan Reynolds. In... I, uh, listen, actually, you know, I'm not on that Ryan Reynolds bandwagon. I'm different from most girls, guys. I just don't... <laughs> I don't see it. No, I I'm not going to lie. He's handsome, really right? Really. He's handsome. But I'm not going to lie. Like, if you compare Ryan Reynolds to Henry Cavill, like, I got to give it to Henry Cavill. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Like, for sure. Like, if you want to do it in that like, perspective, you, got, you, you have to Why are we talking about With this? abs. What? Yeah, this, is a whole, this is a whole different topic. This is a whole different podcast, guys. Right, 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 right. <laughs> we'll have another one. We'll have, we'll have another one. What, we what fucked me up the most was that, like, for for Snyder's Batman, we didn't really get development for him, so I don't really feel a connection. 
but we had Man of Steel for Henry Cavill's Batman or Batman Superman. Fuck me. Superman. <laughs> wasted potential. Wasted it's, potential and wasted it's waste, talent. It's a waste of an actor. It's really just it. It saddens me to realize that we will never ever get a Man of Steel two. And what's worse is also is just that Ben Affleck was actually trying his best. Like he was gonna do a solo Batman movie to give justice to Batman since he didn't really have a movie for himself. And yeah, did the, he sign up for that? And then like uh, one of us. The fans, it? He, he was he no, was supposed to like write his script him. and like direct it too. Oh. The fans ruined it for him, too. Like, it was a mixture of the fans and Warner Brothers because the fans were giving him so much hate. Like, it was ridiculous, was like, the oh, amount of uh, hate yeah. letters. And then Warner Bros. is like, all right, we don't want any Snack Snyder's um, ideas, so I guess we're going to have to cut you out. Snack Snyder. No, I'm man. Just, that's just, every title. time I say I Snack Calvin Snyder, wrong. we're going he... to put in a photo of Zack Snyder's head on a Cheetos bag, and that's it. Yes, do it. Yeah, make that make it the title. <laughs> Guys, but, if you love the Snack Snyder content, don't forget to like and subscribe for this amazing podcast <laughs> because we're obviously giving you the sophisticated and critical critique of what is going on in these universes that you desperately desire. As well as the uh, excellent commentary on the looks of actors. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. If you so need the next a segment of this body, podcast – is talking about Henry Cavill's ass for the next 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Bro, that shit is so round. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. <laughs> no, but, but, Dude, but we're Henry Cavill that. is, is wasting, pot- wasting potential yeah. for him, Superman. I, I don't think he did anything wrong. I think it was just bad, bad time, bad, bad, management. bad place, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bad management. Yeah. Bad. Um, It was a bad situation, too, because. um. Zack Snyder already had the idea of um, what he wanted to do with the entire universe. But the problem is Warner Bros. was not happy that he wasn't listening to them. So we ended up losing so much content that was actually good. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. It's, it's, I don't know. I don't know what they want to do with... Because I know in in the leak as well, they also talked about having um, Shazam, Supergirl, and uh, uh, Urza Miller's Flash as the starting core or the trio for this new Justice League that they want to form. Which listen, that's, it's fine. Well, it's that, cool. That's super cool. I'm, I'm supposed right to get a man. It. It's, it's supposed to be the star for Man of Steel two as well. Yeah. So they're actually. So but that's, that's one also of ripping the other. Henry. Yeah, they're going to change the title like they did with Cap- Captain Marvel and make it to the Marvels, but it's going to be something similar to that. But Henry Cavill should have deserved that man, man still, too. I think he really worked hard to become Superman, being the ideal Superman in most people's eyes. Uh, I mean, to me, he's my only cinematic Superman. I, I wasn't much. around in the 90s where um, they had those other Superman. And I also like, yeah, I don't know. There was no other cinematic Superman to base my, I guess, my expectations off of but Henry Cavill. And it sucks because what people are going to do to this new Supergirl is that they're going to compare her to Henry yeah, Cavill. Like, and it, it shouldn't be like that, but that's how it's going to end up. Yeah, because you just can't help but think like, man, we everyone loves Henry Cavill so much. And then Sasha Cal, uh, she, I don't know if that's your pronouncement, but like what – What's going to happen is that she's really going to get, un- uh, without a doubt, she's probably going to be underrated. Even if she does a good performance, she's still going to get compared to Henry Cavill and his performance as Superman. And it's just unfortunate because of the way they also stated that this is- Supergirl is going to be the replacement for Superman, like for Henry Cavill Superman. Like the way they, uh, the rumors say that, it, like pretty much state it and confirm it, not confirm, but like state it. It's gonna be that way. It's it's definitely how it's worded too. Yeah, and, and that's Warner Bros. who put her on that spot. Like they already doomed her and her career because we already have um, a Superman that everybody loves. Uh, I think the only two Superman that every fan just loved are the one from Superman and Lois and Henry Cavill. I heard Superman and, the and Lois fan- is really good. 
It was actually yeah, really good. Like, I really, much enjoyed, I really enjoyed it. it was good. Band, that this is the best like Superman show and like continuity in a long time. And with Henry Cavill, like everybody who watches the DC movies, they're like, oh my God, this dude is awesome just at being Superman. He's so handsome. He's such a hard worker, good actor. But the problem is that. because Warner Bros. wants to replace him so bad, they're putting this new actress like in a tough spot because now she has to replace someone nobody wants to be replaced. And she's taking a man so that she doesn't even want. She wants to be Supergirl, not Superman. Yeah. So and I, I, I feel think, terrible. I think when um, eventually, because her movie is going to come out eventually, right after the Flash and everything. Probably. I really want to give. Also, they confirm it. They if it does confirm come out, it, I, I really, really, I really just want to give uh, her movie a fair chance, and sort of have like the expectation that this is a friend, brand new hero. hero. And I know that most people won't have that expectation because it does have like the Supergirl, uh, not Supergirl, the super name in it, and it's 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 unfortunate. And I feel like it's the OG fans of Henry Cavill that are gonna mostly hate though. I don't yeah. think like I don't think like people that have never seen like the Flash TV show or anything like that. I feel like kids that watch the Flash movie and just the Flash movie. I feel like they'll. Uh, I hope hopefully it, they represent her well and her character development is well done to the point yeah. where. Kids that watch this movie for the first time, they'll understand like that this is a new character that they won't compare her to Superman and all that stuff, and understand that she is her own character. And I really hope they they actually do that, make her her own character, and not like her personality is like Superman or anything like that. Like yeah, I really hope no it's no carbon copies, please. It's like yeah. you're just gender swapping at that point, and it's yeah. Yeah, I I believe she's gonna do well in this role. Role, I think Ooh. they have a good director to actually. Fill the out director the for the roles for these movie. I believe it's in the guy who did the it movies. Yeah, hold oh, on, let me let me let me check no. out if I got you guys. Uh, I don't know if I would call that a good director. Yes. I'm gonna be honest with you. It, I it, so I watched the first movie. Andres and I, I dead ass thought it chapter one or whatever the fuck you call the first movie was a comedy. That shit had me laughing the whole time. Well, I think it, I think. That, that's better for this movie. They never confirmed. Yeah. They never confirmed that Supergirl is getting her own movie. I think they so did. he directed. He no, it's just a rumor. It's a, it's a rumor. He it's directed it, and he directed Mama, which are horror films that are not. I mean, I liked it no, just because Ma- of Mama. Like, I love Mama. Like, I love like, Mama. I haven't watched Mama, but I love the acting in it. I I think those children did amazing. And yeah, I think obviously you'll get the it most really was the a really good sequel. But um, think, the stories mm, themselves, yeah, they're, they're yeah. just like, is, is Mama from a book too? Because it is from a book, so we can't really I take no that. I no, no idea. Mom, Mama, I, I, Mama's supposed to be original. I think is original I think, story. I think Mama originated but, from like, like how, folk legend, like probably. Krampus. It's like a Krampus thing. But that, no, this okay, is besides okay. the point, guys. Anything. Uh, yeah. some, something I want to mention is that we've been talking about so much of the negative that is coming out of this change. I also want to talk about some <clears> of the good that's coming from it as well. Because we also get, we still get to keep, personally for me, Shazam. I, listen, I know everyone here has like probably their own issues and gripes with Shazam. But honestly, I'm glad that between having to lose Superman, Batman, and having to keep aquaman and wonder woman i probably would have just ditched all of them and still kept shazam shazam to me when i first watched this movie i really loved his movie and i'm glad that he's still here it's just unfortunate that in order for him to stay here it cost a lot and you know we also have that black adam movie coming we also have i don't even know what else is next for um for aquaman this too that's pretty much it. Fuck off, whatever. Anyways. I want to let the audience know that. Be ready for the the not the brutal experience that they're going to get from Grimm and Yes right now for Shazam. Listen. Yeah, uh, so. Actually, I want to kind of skip Shazam. I already don't like Shazam. But I again, oh, we're talking about the positive. New. So the positive that I do want to bring is that I think and this is my own personal theory because this movie 
um, is going to reset the, the universe and it's going to allow for new characters to come. I think this is one of the reasons why Blue Beetle is going to possibly be part of this universe and come to theaters because they already confirmed that it's not going to be only on HBO Max. It's going to be on theaters now because I, I don't know it's why. It's not going to be on HBO Max. Why. It's only going to be on theaters. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, but before, the, it was actually the other way before when they first um, yeah. announced it. Yeah, a like, lot of their movies were I think, trying to go to HBO think, Max. Yeah, I think it's specifically because of Flashpoint, which is the only thing, the, like the one thing in the entire film that I'm glad about, and is that it might bring Blue Beetle into theaters. It might be the reason why it comes to theater. So I, as a big fan of just, obviously I am Hispanic, as a big fan of just any Hispanic thriving and shining, I am just so glad that we're going to get a Blue Beetle live action yeah. with Cholo as the, the main actor. He's in Cobra Kai. He does amazing. And so I just who's he, who's I can't Cobra wait. Kai? He's Miguel. Oh, the main oh wait, that the ass? I didn't even know about that. That's yeah, so cool. Exactly. Yeah, he, I love Miguel. Blue Beetle. Uh, and the thing is, they fan casted him. And he's, and at first, and he, he didn't really know. Burn. Yeah, and at first, he didn't mm. really know. He was like, hey, sure, I'll, I'll try to get into it. And then, like, months later, it's like, oh, um, confirmed. Cholo, um, I forgot his last name, but he's officially Blue Beetle. And I was like, let's fucking go. Dude, that, that is definitely sick. Oh so, yeah. yeah, that's that's my that's my positive right there. I yeah, I mean, I think another one for me is definitely keeping Urza Miller's Flash, because like, granted, it um, might not. If I know you don't, I I'm pretty sure Grim <laughs> just does not like most of the prior DC EU like um, heroes. Uh, I like Henry Cavill. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that's like the one. He gets the one. <laughs> the only Grim thing. at least gets the one. Uh, I, the same I think I know it's not going to be same, the same Urza Miller Flash as like we see in Snyder Cut, but I'm glad that we actually get to have a movie for him, unlike um, unlike Snyder's Batman, like Affleck. He didn't get a movie, and I'm just it's glad Affleck. that. But <laughs> <laughs> it's not that tough. I know, but I'm just glad that we're getting a Flash movie in general because, my God, like, at least, like, Henry Cavill got his. Uh, just, Batman didn't get his, even though Robert Patterson is doing his own thing. I'm just glad they were at least having a Flash movie because this movie was supposed to come out last year. or yeah. It was supposed to come out in 2017. That is true. It was supposed to come out a while ago. And now that we're finally yeah. seeing, like, that it's going to happen. I'm glad. I just, uh, I don't know. There's not much that we can talk about for this particular rumor set that's gonna make me feel good about what's to come. Yeah, I feel it's gonna be more nostalgic. More, It'd be more nostalgic. What you feel? Because like, not only we're saying, but there's also Michael Keaton. And I would love having Michael Keaton back. I want to think him as my new Batman because that's also one of the rumors that he replaces. Affleck as well but see him once again in that suit I remember I was watching the Batman I'm also got a popular of him as well and see him in a movie once again and be like damn I remember that movie I had a CD for it you had a CD of, of uh, Michael Keaton's I had a CD for, for that movie and that was one of my audio you mean DVD? Oh, DVDs. Bro. Yeah, DVD. It was the same shit. <laughs> I'll tell that to any old you know? person, they'll slap you. <laughs> I know, right? But good thing we're living in a new era. It's okay. It's the same to us. For context, well, I was right. born after 2000. Yes. Oh. Well, you want to give our socials as well? <laughs> no. That's all. Um. So I think the next thing that we are gonna talk about is the um announcement slash delay of morbius now it was a surprise it was definitely a big surprise to literally everybody that morbius was going to be delayed until april of this year and, and it's crazy because this delay announcement came two weeks before the movie was supposed to release this month and a lot of people are speculating that 
oh, they're going to add in scenes of Spider-Man. They're going to add in all this little, like, Easter eggs and fan service stuff just to get more people into the box office. And I don't know. I don't quite believe that. What do you guys think? Well, not only it's for the Omicron and that pandemic. I hope everybody's family is doing all right. Everything's going good for them. And prayers are out to the ones who are affected. Let's first say that. But it, it's not only for that. But I think it might be because of the Spider-Man hype. I think they didn't really know what they wanted to do in that movie. Like, they didn't know with Venom. I think Venom was a more better way to handle their situation without a Spider-Man than Morbius. Because you see in the trailer, there's there's multiple universes that they want to connect with the Raimi-verse, the Garfield-verse, not only the MCU, back to Venom. It's really hard to try to connect them all. And yeah. after what we've seen from No Way Home, uh, I think they really got the fans, the fans really think like, it's Spider-Man of this Morbius film. And they're like, oh, damn, we actually have to decide now. Yeah, but it's wow. also like, I don't know. I hold think... on. We gotta, hold on. We gotta, that was amazing. Like, Nova just that broke that down. down. Beautifully, I I need to. Wow, hey, that was beautiful. <laughs> it left me speechless. It was like he grabbed every information and elaborated so cleanly. It yeah, was beautiful. Was like the flow that was good too. Like no stutter. That was great. Like yeah, like, no stutter, no stop. This is, uh, this is the two minutes of uh, Nova appreciation we're gonna have for this podcast. Everyone, give a big round of applause for Nova. <laughs> No, Very good job. Very good job. Um, <laughs> yeah, good job, Nova. <laughs> um, I, uh, Raf, real quick, I just want to hear your thought on this, real quick. Um, well, I think like Morbius getting delayed. I feel like if they they say it's because of COVID, I think that'll be like that'll that'll dissipate even more hype for this movie, like. If this movie got delayed because of COVID, like for three months, because of well, ever, like because of the recent COVID spikes, I feel like that'll just ruin the hype even more for this movie. Like that you're gonna keep it the same because delaying this movie for three by three months, it kind of makes you think that this like that this was a purposeful decision to where they're gonna change something in the film. It wasn't just a uh, a marketing thing. It was an actual we're gonna change something. Hopefully, like three months isn't a lot of time so probably so maybe a post credit scene or something uh we we really don't know until we watch the movie and they probably won't even say what they change in these three months but like i'm really hoping that they do it in a way where they include at least one of the spider-men because i i think having all three of them in there like all three references is kind of it's just really messy and i feel like it shouldn't be that way it's it'll be really messy and really confusing for everybody else and it seems like Sony's trying to get away with that in, in the trailers, at least, and in, in their marketing just to create more hype for this movie. But it, it's it's just not going to fly. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. I feel um, that this movie isn't in a specific universe. I know that we discussed before um, that you guys mostly thought it was going to be an Andrews universe, but it's just it just feels like they're use, using reference to catch viewers and it feels like that that whole you, you make a pretty cover you'll get buyers type of thing that was at least half the trailer as well like half the yeah, working strategy I, was references just, like yeah. they got a whole 15 second clip out of the two minute trailer saying we are venom oh sorry wrong movie like yeah, yeah so. I, feel, I feel if that if that is the case where they don't introduce a spider-man in this universe with morbius i think a lot of fans be disappointed so so much of what they did with Venom is how but we. I don't I don't think which the movie to introduce a Spider Man he... to even release this movie at all because if the main goal was just to connect to one of the three Spider Man we saw in No Way Home, then this movie then they shouldn't have produced this movie at all. Do you get what I'm saying? Because like I don't know. To I be honest, like... I, uh, watching the trailer, I feel like I've already seen the movie. That's how I already have like. I'm already assured myself that like I have no. Well, Sony just has a Sony movie. just has a history of just putting every everything important into the yeah. trailers. It's nothing new. It, it really feels like we've seen the whole like at least half of the movie, like half the, the movie, and then like we're, 
Yeah, like the the important yeah. character development parts. Like you've already seen that in the trailer, and that's a two minute yeah, trailer. We, like, how, it sucks. we saw really how he was born. He just went in the sprays. The bats came and bit him, and he was freaking Morbius. Bam! Like what? Literally, the bat, only question that we have for this movie is who's the Spider Man because they keep referencing it a lot. Well, I think and, I think you shouldn't. Put like your they they keep claiming on it the, on the on. The, on who Spider-Man's gonna be in here? I think now I'm agreeing more with with Grim that it's not gonna be a specific universe where it's connected. I feel like it's just gonna be like um, Venom's universe, where there's no specific implication of Libra, implication of a Toby, a, of an Andrew, of a Tom, because they don't need to well, do it. They they're they're. Well, they- well, they kind of need to, but they don't need to. But you can already tell it from Venom. They don't need to, but you can tell it. What did you say, Liz? Because they kind of already did it with the Venom. Most people just saw it for its post credits scene with the leaks and all that. And not only that, Tom Hardy also posted a video of him saying, with a cap saying, uh, "No way home," with one of the editors, and that's what people got more curious. Be like, oh. Is he in No Way Home? Is he going to reference yeah. it in his movie? And that's yeah, that one picture or like, video came out two weeks saw. before the movie. I don't know. I don't personally for me. I did not go to Venom, Let There Be Carnage, to see a post credit scene because if I really wanted to do that, I would have just not went and watched the movie. But I don't know. I it seems like that's their marketing strategy, though. Like it really seems yeah, like they're it... trying to appeal. Like the fact that they put so many references in the trailers, it kind of feels like they're leaning towards. Hey, you know this is a Spider-Man universe, right? This is Spider-Man. Like it, like to people yeah. who have never seen, to people who don't know Morbius at all, they really made it very clear that Spider that he's in the same universe as a Spider-Man. Well, that's because they, they really try to make that clear. This is a character that is unknown to like basically anyone who has only watched Spider-Man movies. Because even yep. before Tom Hardy's Venom, you had Spider-Man 3's Venom. I know, but doesn't that instill the the lack of confidence that they have for this movie? You know what they're doing? They are tr- so they're badly doing what Shang Chi didn't do, which sort of like put them in a lower spot where they should be. Because for me, Shang Chi was an amazing movie, but nobody knows who he really is uh, unless you're a comic book uh, reader. So when you read um, comic books and you know these characters, to you it's like, oh, you know, I know who this is. I want to watch this movie. But for people who are just casually watching marvel movies because they're good with the writing and some of the characters and very appealing and you hello did he cut off did... yeah he cut me off let's give it a second yeah but yeah i mean i agree with him where it when it comes to um shang chi the problem with like the way they did Shang Chi is that they had a good story to back up him not being um, as recognizable in the public eye, and that's what I think it's going to be lacking in this Morbius movie because they don't. Ha- I don't think they're showing anything that's quite appealing to us as like a moviegoer to go watch this movie. Besides, like what you guys said, to go see these references, to go perhaps see a post credit scene uh-huh. or two. Hello, Are you back? Yeah, there's always something happening when I'm in this podcast. Always. <laughs> My Discord updated. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> it do be like that. Great. Yeah, um, did I get your point across? Am I, am I going on the right direction? All I heard was to uh, reference for casual moviegoers, which is, yeah, wait, it, it is where I was going. And um, they're just seeing references, making their, their little cover beautiful, Without actually writing stuff inside the book, it's just a book with pretty covers. Yeah, true. So, so I just say, if you are watching the stream and you're planning on watching Morbius, uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but um, I don't think this is gonna have a juicy story or a good background. It's just gonna be something to appeal to movie uh, goers and just hope that they do amazing so that they could keep the character if not they're just gonna bury him and act like that didn't happen yeah. if they bury him i'm gonna be really disappointed listen man all i'm saying is that morbius just has so much 
um i guess going wrong disappointment you know it, it it just has so much disappointment going in for me you know it's it's just sad it's like we'll watch it and we're just expecting to be disappointed and that's just that kind of sucks yeah exactly but we are going to watch it that is that is true. We'll, yes. we'll watch it. We we'll we'll watch it. it we'll still take, they'll still take our money, but yeah, but still, we're still gonna get we'll this tell point. you that they sh- will probably end up telling you that don't let them take your money. All right, so boys, let's talk about something that is actually going to come out in two days. Um, Peacemaker, the series uh, directed by James Gunn, is coming out on January thirteenth, uh, which. Um, Once that show comes out, you can watch a review of it right here on this channel. Totally not sponsored. You're right. Thank you, Nova. But we are going to have a review of the first three episodes coming out on HBO Max. So stay tuned for that. Uh, It's probably already going to be out by the time this podcast comes out. So if you haven't checked it out since this podcast came on, definitely go check it out. It's going to be pretty good. I already have high expectations for this show. Um, James Gunn is an amazing director. He did Guardians of the Galaxy and obviously Suicide Squad, which is probably the best DC movie that came out in the last five years, um, not including Snyder Cut. Um, but yeah, oh, even including Snyder Cut, because I think it's way better than Snyder Cut. So yeah, guys, um, we recently, I think the trailer came out last month, but there's a lot that I want to talk about from the stuff that we got to see from the trailer. Uh, specifically, just the... Uh, just the effects of Suicide Squad that had the got what Peacemaker had to deal with due to the effects of Suicide Squad. Because in the trailer, you see he's having a hard time struggling becoming a better person. And I don't know. I think that's a great journey for him because, you know, in the Suicide Squad, he's sort of just a psychopathic show off, which is great to watch, but horrible to think about. He also yeah. has uh, extreme loyalty to the government. Um, the whole him betraying um, the the team itself because, again, he operates under Amanda Waller rather than any team he's in. I feel like that's going to show in the show. I feel that maybe that's, uh, that's going to be a return. Or if it's a return, it might be a switch. Maybe his character develops... And instead of betraying his team, he actually betrays the government. We'll see. I mean, I have, I have a lot of expectation coming into Peacemaker. Uh, I just, I think this, I think it's just gonna be great. Uh, Ralph, what do you think of it? How do you think this is gonna turn out? Um, I think it's like pretty funny actually. Like I, I think as a, I think seeing John Cena like this is actually like hilarious because he's like. He's kind of unfiltered in a in a good way, like in a funny way. And I'm, I wouldn't say in a good way, but like no, he, he's way. really he's like in a comedic good way. But like sometimes what he's talking about, it's kind of just like, oh, I don't think that this is definitely not for kids. Don't don't tell them to watch that. But I think like seeing John Cena like this is hilarious. Like it's it's gonna be really fun. And I think in the trailer, uh, that's you can kind of tell that it's a pretty good trailer because it shows like absolutely no character development at all. It's it's kind of hilarious because no matter what he's kind of like, in in kind of the torture sequence and uh, when they're torturing uh, vigilante, in that one clip of the trailer, he's kind of just like, "Don't worry, I got you. I'm not gonna say anything." And he's just like, "Oh, just uh, when they're asking him like, oh, uh, how do you like that? You like me torturing your friend?" It's like, "Yeah, I fucking like it a lot." And it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. That's hilarious. He has like no loyalty to his team at all, and he's like, it, "It's hilarious." Yeah, yeah, it, I I love it. I it's just again, I feel like that's gonna come again where he either has to pick his team or the government. <laughs> it seems like he's more picking the government, which is hilarious. This movie is also a good break from sort of the emotional roller coaster that was No Way Home, like having just that sad ending for Peter Parker and then transitioning to guns, violence, and murder, everything that they wanted kids to avoid in the eight in the nineties. I'm just so in for it. I, I'm so fucking hyped for this show. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Nova, what do you think? I, I think it's going to be a pretty good show. Like Ralph said, they didn't show that much in the trailer specifically, but you do have that feeling that he's going to get a good character development 
throughout the ser series. And I can't wait for to see that because I know James Gunn's a good director. He makes good characters. I do question him about the vigilante choice. I think that's mostly because of a, a suicide type squad thing. Like just get the good, get a decent actors that's funny and just play it, play it throughout. Mm -hmm. uh, but I want to see how that character goes because I the last time I seen vigilante on like a any type of screen was another TV show of Arrow. It was Arrow, yeah. We, this was a definitely yeah, like we, a we, completely we, different take. Yeah. yeah, it's it's this feels like a different vigilante we're going to get. Like just a funnier, dorkier one, maybe a little smarter. Yeah, I, I, I think it's good. I want to see how that character this. goes. I think he could be interesting. I feel see. like that character could be a good, I guess. Seeing him dorky is just so, it, it's like. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so much it's dorky so much feeling. Like, it's so much better, though. Like, I, 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 I think personally Vigilante, love this. Vigilante is just it, it fits, to be the it fits the theme. character it, in the show. I, I, it fits the theme. I don't think, I don't think comic goers will will like it that much but i think at the end of it you'd be like okay okay yeah, he you're like, he, he'd be good yeah and you think of the word vigilante you don't really imagine like like the word vigilante like out like someone who breaks the rules but does it for like the good of technically being a hero, like being a hero in their own right but not following rules like it's kind of funny how if you imagine the word vigilante and by its definition you don't re you can't imagine it being this guy like it's I wonder what they're going to do with that, and I feel like it'll be really fun. Yeah, and what's his morals, and how does he play? With, how did he get arrested? Like, what did he do? Like, yeah, like just, yeah, like just how, from that look of him, you're kind of like, what? what how, what's going on? True. And why is Peacemaker with him? With him, because you know Peacemaker with government, so is Vigilante also part of the government that's helping him alongside, or are they just good Guys, friends? I think we're excluding yeah. the probably the best character in this show. The fucking the eagle. intelligence eagle. Listen, I know what's he called? It's called Baldy. I think so. Baldy. Dude, this eagle, I hope, is the goat of the show. Bro, he went straight for the asshole. But he's gonna die before the end. I know he is. Every animal fucking dies in these types of shows. He's gonna get cooked and get like eaten for Thanksgiving dinner. It's unfortunate, but I could see it happening. <laughs> i mean yeah uh damn i mean the, in this in this like i guess in this time like january it's sort of a null period for news and mostly youtube as a whole so i think this is a, a kind of a good place to wrap it up for this week ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for sticking with us we hope you all have a great rest of your week and have an awesome weekend take care everybody peace out bye Good night. All right, have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. And don't forget, Snack Snyder. <laughs>